film this video for the longest time, but it is a jumper tutorial on how to jazz up an old jumper that you've got lying around. Uh, I think this tutorial is going to be perfect for each of the seasons that we're all about to transition into, whether it be autumn or spring. Uh, there's a place in the world for this tutorial, so I hope you guys enjoy. It is on how to make this cat jumper. Um, you don't have to do a cat. This was huge last season, so I hope it transitions into this uh, autumn slash spring, but we shall see. Um, so yeah, if you want to learn how to make this cat face jumper, or if you want to learn the technique of applique, then keep watching. So the first thing you're going to need is obviously a jumper. I thrifted this one, but you can use an old jumper that you've got lying around at home. I would say using an old jumper, not your favorite jumper, just to try the technique out first. So I went for pink uh, fabric for the ears and black for the eyes, but pick the favorite fabric that you want to use for your design. You'll then need one mil thick heavy duty interfacing, some matching thread, a pair of scissors, fabric scissors preferably, uh, a whole bunch of pins, uh, I like my little heart cushion that I just made, and then you'll need a fabric washable pen. You'll then need a whole bunch of paper. Now you can use newspaper or baking paper like I have, but you just want to lay the jumper over the top of your paper and trace around the outside to get our pattern. Then you want to fold your pattern in half and draw the design on one side. This is the only way you can get a perfectly symmetrical design. So I drew half of the cat face on the right hand side, folded my fabric in half and traced it uh, onto the other. So then when you fold it out, you know that it's 100% exactly the same as the other side. You then need to trace off any part of the design that's going to be cut out in one type of fabric. So the eyes we trace off together which are going to be black and then the ears and the nose which are going to be pink. And as you can see you just trace a little design around the outside um, and then we will be cutting that out of fabric. So you don't have to go with the colour theme that I have gone for. I just made the eyes black and the nose and ears pink but um, depending on what you want the jumper to look like you can put any kind of fabric combination together. This is one of the easier ways of doing applique. Um, one of the harder ways would be layering up the fabric directly over the top of each other and then cutting down to the layer of colour that you want to use. But for the purpose of this tutorial, that is all I will show you on the applique front. Then you want to get your finalised cat face pattern and pin the important parts out on your jumper so everything is secure and set in the right place and you're happy with how it sits. And then it's basically just a matter of going through and uh, cutting around the design. Uh, as you can see me doing here, once you've obviously cut out the design very carefully, uh, you'll then be tracing around the outside with a washable fabric marker. down our fabric pattern pieces so I went the black eyes first and the ears and the nose on top but doesn't really matter which way you do it uh, so obviously the most important part now is to make sure that our pattern pieces are lying in the correct spot so I just use my pin as a guide pinning through the fabric and then making sure that the pin head lined up with the pattern piece down below so this is what your jumper should look like I know it looks really weird it kind of looks like a badger but now you want to head over to your sewing machine and on a just a normal straight stitch stitch around your outline so I'm just tracing over with the sewing machine the face that I drew so here's me sewing over the nose uh, make sure you do this in your matching threads so I've gone pink thread and then here's me doing the ears but this is just a matter of uh, attaching our design to our jumper so obviously at this point make sure that you are not stitching 
through both layers of the jumper. You just want to be stitching through one layer, uh, if that makes any sense. And then we want to come back with our fabric scissors and trim away any excess. So we've got one mil seam allowance on each of our pattern pieces. As you can see, I'm trimming quite carefully down, but that is what each of the pattern pieces should look like now. You then want to put your sewing machine onto a zigzag stitch, and then keeping the needle in the center of the foot, you want to decide on what kind of a width of zigzag you're gonna do. For the most part, I stuck to pretty much a number three, but you could do higher or lower. And then you wanna run your stitch length right up to uh, the narrowest point. You don't want it to be stitching directly on top of each other, um, but you will see the example once I've done it in a minute. Uh, so yeah, at this point, I'm stitching on about a three zigzag width but I would suggest doing a little sample first and deciding on how wide you want your zigzag embossing to be. So for those of you who aren't familiar with applique, this is essentially what applique is, applying fabric uh, to other fabrics, so getting up a 3D layering. So that is what my finished nose is going to look like. So again, I feel like I should mention the stitching that I just did then was uh, catching the fabric on one side with one stitch, and then catching the fabric below with the other stitch. So you're encasing that raw edge basically with our zigzag thread. I hope that kind of makes sense. Hopefully the example um, that I just showed you before uh, showcased how to do it. Uh, but then basically you just want to repeat the process to all the other pattern pieces that you've got in the same bit of fabric. So there you could see the ears and the nose were finished. Now you want to take a moment to iron on our one mil thick interfacing. So I just traced around, laid the jumper down on the interfacing and traced around the outside and got a very rough pattern and then I took it over to the ironing board and with a bit of steam, as you can see it stuck, um, I ironed that interfacing on on the inside of the jumper, not the outside. This this just gives us a really firm and stable base to do the zigzagging on because as soon as you start zigzagging on a sewing machine it wants to push and pull and stretch the fabric which is not what we want so that interfacing just gives us a really stable base um, to continue on with. Side note, I probably should have done that for the ears and nose. So in hindsight um, you should probably put that step first before you start any zigzagging. See, these are the awesome tricks you guys get to learn from my mistakes. But as you can just see, I just quickly stitched around the outside of the eyes and now I've come back down to do the mouth and the whiskers and the eyes and all the other features. So this is just exactly the same as what I was showing you before, except instead of catching the raw fabric edge on one side and the jumper on the other, um, you're now just drawing the design with your sewing machine and the thread if that makes any sense. Uh, this takes a little little while to do. Um, you've just gotta be really patient um, because of course the stitch length is up really high. So just be patient with it and try not to force or stretch the jumper too much. trim back our interfacing. As you can see I'm doing this really roughly um, just by freehand but a rule of thumb here just don't get too close to the zigzag stitching that we've just embossed. Um, I sort of went between 0.5 and 1 centimeter away from our stitching edge uh, and the reason why we want to trim our interfacing back is that the top can look quite bulky if you leave the one mil thick um, interfacing underneath and that isn't really a flattering look. Uh, as far as pulling the interfacing away after you've ironed it on, it is really easy. Technically the jumper is finished at this point, but I decided to add on a little bow at the bottom. I actually made this one myself, but you could grab an old bow off a headband and stitch that on, or you could just leave it as is.
kiddo. It really does mean a lot to me when you guys subscribe and comment and like and all those good things. But I hope you guys are happy and well and I'll see you on my next video. Bye!